I like you, I don't know actually. So due to some reason, we are not able to fix. I mean, that, let me tell you that. Uh, so because of some reason, we, we are not able to fix it because, you know, we need a slot from Moodle and other things that are there. So once it is decided, then I'll get, I mean, I'll let you know. So, but it is not decided yet. So I also don't know. <laughs> like it so, will be, uh, like it will be out by three, like before three days now of the examination. It will be told in like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hopefully show. Sure. Yeah, hopefully it is. It will not be like tomorrow. Uh, there is exam today. I am announcing it. It will not be like that. Yeah, I think there will be enough time. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay, so we discussed uh, uh, few a few probability density functions. So what we are discussing basically, uh, I am giving you some examples of uh, probability density functions. Okay, from PDFs, some PDFs, specific PDFs. Okay. So what is the PDF? So it is sir, right here. Yeah. Sir, uh, I have a question, sir. I doubt. Sir. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, um, like uh, for uh, for a binomial distribution, we have mm -hmm. to find probability of y success in m trials of um, Bernoulli, given that we get x success in n trials. So there are no particular like um, condition for m and n and x and y. So in the Bernoulli trial or Bernoulli distribution, there is only two possible outcomes. So I mean, so actually Bernoulli distribution is a particular case of binomial. Bernoulli distribution as a yeah, Bernoulli distribution, you have only one time you are crossing the point, let's say. One time you are having the experiment. In binomial, you are in time. So it is in independent Bernoulli trials. So let me write it. Binomial can be can be defined. It is equivalent to saying n independent and independent Bernoulli trial, or you can say Bernoulli distribution, Bernoulli trial. So if you pick the, if you set this n to be equal to one, then binomial is exactly equal to Bernoulli. Binomial is equivalent to Bernoulli when you are having only one Bernoulli trial. What is a Bernoulli trial? Bernoulli trial is something but one time you are having the experiment, and in that experiment, you have only two possible outcomes. One is one can consider it as success, otherwise could be failure. This is your sample space. Okay, let me write smallest, smaller. So, and then in that case, we said, okay, you can of course define a random variable. S for one, the success for one. Sir, and that's it. Yeah. Sir, I want to ask like probability of Y success in M Bernoulli trials, given that we get X success in N Bernoulli trials. Yeah, N independent Bernoulli trials. So it is like, okay, you are having this. Okay, you are having this N Bernoulli trials. So it could be N could be something 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's say N equal to 7. Now, number, total number. So for each time, let's say you are tossing a coin because coin is a very good model here because it has two possible outcomes one is head and tail. So you are seven times you are tossing the coin. Okay. Now what does this binomial measures? It is the total number of success, a total number of successes in seven Bernoulli trial, which are independent because the outcome in the first coin is independent of the outcome in the second, second coin. So binomial is nothing but it measures the total number of success. Total number of successes in n Bernoulli trials. Is there any problem? Success in n independent. Yes. Is that OK now? Independent Bernoulli trial. Bernoulli trials. This is what it measures. Now what happens is uh, there is, uh, so this is total, but it does not say in which particular trial you'll get a success. So for example, you can get three successes. Suppose you want to find out the total number of pods. So basically it is a sequence, right? So it could be S, F, S, F, F, S, S, okay? Something like that. So here, for example, four times success, but four times success also can occur in different ways. So you have to consider all possible those favorable cases. It is like your uh, 10 plus two standard problem. Okay, where 
the probability of uh, tossing uh, getting ahead is let's say three so that's the probability of success but a failure will be then one minus three just the Bernoulli trial okay the Bernoulli distribution so you know for each each is defined as Bernoulli but now what you are doing your question is different you are having n times Bernoulli trial now we are measuring total number of successes so what is the possibility what is this not possibility but what is the probability that you will have four times success in seven trials so this could be one way to get it. Similarly, that could be another way to get it. Let's say fast four times you got success, and then the rest you got failure. Okay. So accumulating all this, all the sequences of success and failures, you get a number, right? So that number is actually given by this formula. So the question is, you can do it by yourself when n is small, but when n is in general. So what is the formula for that? So that is x equal to x, small x. So this, so capital X means the random number, which measures the total number of success, and this is a number. So total number of success could be either zero or one, up to n. Okay. So n could be what is the probability that I will get no success, or one time success only in n trials, or dot 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 up to n, like all all our successes in all trials. So that is what it measures. So then you. Have this 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 uh, formula, which is n c x and p to the power. So n times what is that? X times success minus p to the power x, and the rest and then uh, not so. What is the probability of having this event, for example? This event is this is probability p. This is probability one minus p. Probability p. These are all independent. So probability of the entire sequence is nothing but probability of this individual outcomes because they are independent. So which you proved earlier, the probability of A intersection B, let's say, will be called A times the order of B. So you can consider this as an event, like the first time is success. That is an event. You can consider it like that. Okay, that first time, first toss, in the first Bernoulli trial, you get success or you get head. So, and then it will be N minus X. Okay, then you have this uh, probability. So it is just a formula which captures this equation, this kind of a, this kind of, a, of an experiment, let's say. So, so it generalizes the entire thing. It can be a coin, but it could be anything where there are two possible outcomes, and that is repeated independently. That's n number of times. Then this is the total number of a particular a possible outcome. Then this will be like this. So this can again be obtained using your formula of 10 plus 2, like the number of all possible cases divided by all possible cases, and so on. That's how you get this number. So that can be done, but we are just saying that this is the formula, so one can derive it. Of course, I did not derive it. I'm just saying this is the PMF corresponding to binomial. We are calling it a binomial. There is a reason to call it a binomial because these coefficients are nothing coming from the binomial expansion. Okay, this coefficient like p1 plus p, you can write it like these are the binomial, uh, this uh, what is called uh, binomial coefficient of let's say p plus one minus p whole to the power um, n. Then this will be there is nothing but the binomial coefficient. Okay, I did not say all this because you know the okay, so there is a lot of time saying everything. I mean, you you should that's why you should I, I refer to you a book which you should read. And there, there are a lot of problems you can see, like uh, there are a lot of examples, okay, which can be put into this particular framework. Okay, so I cannot say everything because that is time consuming and <laughs> finish everything, right? So, but anyway, so it can be discussed in much more detail. You get, I mean, even I did not show you. What does the curve look like? Curve meaning, uh, what is the PMF look like? I didn't even say what is the bar diagram. I mean, I every time I plotted it, but I did not say. It. For example, when this, I mean, <laughs> anyway, so we are not having much time today, but okay, let me just say it. So let's say these are the possible for a discrete case. Okay, for example, if this continuous, let's say the entire thing from here to here. And for discrete, let's say these are the possible values of the sample point. Now, when I have this kind of a curve, then I'm saying that this is area. Okay, This is the area because we are measuring it like the probability of having this A to B, let's say this is A, this is B, Fx, Dx, okay, uh, A to B. So this is the probability that uh, the event or the values of this X will be lying between A to B, is the probability of this particular event. But when I'm computing the uh, discrete, for the discrete case, so I'm computing the precise probability here, this discrete values. I am taking the sum of it. Okay, I am having this uh, discrete values. 
twisted values and having the sum of it. Then the question is, how does it make this thing equivalent? Okay, uh, or maybe in what sense this continuous phenomena can, or the discrete phenomena can be considered as a special case of this. That also can be done. For example, this area, the idea of area can also be included in the discrete phenomena. For example, you consider a region or an interval of length one around every point, every point in the sample space or the range of the sample. So this is the range of the sample space. We have some sample space here, S, and all of these or some of these are mapped to this one. Some of these are mapped to, let's say, this one. Some of these are mapped to this one and so on. So now if you take an interval of length one around this each point, and then you consider a rectangle here, okay? Then the area of this rectangle is nothing but the probability, this height only, because the base is one unit. The base is one, then you consider this as the area of this. Now then, if this one, so then you can show that this is also a kind of the same thing, you are actually calculating the area. So this, this, this has a same similar interpolation. But when I'm saying this, I'm including that these are the entire interval of unit length. Okay, so in that sense, it is the same. Okay, so yeah, so this can also be explained, that, that the PMF also can be explained uh, this way as well, okay, but we, which we which I did not discuss, okay. But anyway, so you can re so that's why we refer to your book. So you you should follow a particular book because uh, you know everything will not be able to discuss, okay, will not be able to discuss all possible <laughs> all possible things, okay. But if you read uh, go through some uh, some some different sources, okay, so then you possibly will get a different angle to the entire thing. So what is the minimum possible we are discussing here? Or let's say we are keeping a balance that much as we can say, like whatever is minimum necessary for you to understand in order to grasp what is going on here, okay? But that in any way, so these things again can be discussed in many, in many ways, okay? So yeah, so this is the thing. Okay, I think we, we are uh, losing a lot of time. So, <laughs> so any other question quickly? So, so what we are doing here is basically we are we started talking about specific uh, PDFs, probability density functions corresponding to some continuous uh, random variables, and we are giving it different names. And these names they are due to different kind of uh, different kind of invention which are associated with this this particular kind of PDF. For example, uh, last time I mean towards the end of yesterday this lecture we talked about gamma distribution, right? We talked about gamma distribution. Gamma distribution. And uh, so it involves, the PDF involves the gamma function. So that's why we said it, we call it a gamma distribution, okay? And we said it like this, the PDF is like this. So what is happening here? See, here we are not associating any random variable. As I said before, this is the beginning of this course, that we are, in the beginning, we'll be talking about sigma algebra, sample space, uh, random variable, everything. But end of the day, what matters is the PDF. You know PDF, and you believe that the, this PDF represents a random experiment or a, a random experience via or through a random variable, then that's it. So, so, you, so if 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 this function is a particular type, if you know this, let's say it is defined for entire real number minus infinity, infinity for some portion. For example, here uh, the way we wrote it here is I think gamma certain alpha theta to the power alpha, there are two parameters, x to the power alpha minus one, e to the power minus x y theta. And this is valid when uh, x is bigger than or equal to zero or bigger than zero, one point doesn't matter and zero otherwise, okay? <coughs> otherwise. So for this is positive, this is taking positive value, let's say only if this x is, if this here. Now, if you plot it, okay, if you plot it, uh, you would see like a different kind, for example, plot it means for different values of, so this is a game. You can use, you can, you can use your skill for programming. Let's say you can use C programming, okay, any programming language you can use. For example, if you're, I mean, Python is a good language for data analysis, so you can use some, uh, you can write some programs or some code using Python, okay? And you can try to see what does it look like if I vary alpha and theta. In fact, I must tell you also, that in different books, okay, 
uh, you, this 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 distribution is not defined in this way. Okay, this distribution is actually defined in this way. So this is called this is the this is what the notation is in in some books. In fact, the book I, which I refer to you, uh, it uses the this notation. This the, uh, the one I'm writing. It is minus lambda t. Okay, here of course I must say alpha, theta, both are positive. Okay, and this uh, when let's say t begins, so they write it t, at, and not fx plus ft, because sometimes what happens is this t measures the time. Okay. In, in some kind of, let's say you are measuring lifetime, okay, of something. So if T sometimes measures time also. I mean, T is represented as time. So that's why some people prefer to write it as T, not X. Uh, and zero otherwise, let's say. Uh, then what happens is here also you have two parameters, which alpha and lambda, and both are uh, bigger than zero. And this lambda is nothing but one, nothing by nothing but one by theta here. It's, if you just say set lambda equal to 1 by theta in, in, in this particular distribution, then you get this particular expression, okay? But when you explain this, this, is, this has another dimension to this. I mean, when you try to plot it, suppose here I was plotting it for this, and here again you plot this, and then you try to see what are the changes in the diagram when you vary different values of alpha and different values of lambda. And you take different. So in, based on that, this expression, some people will say, that alpha is called the safe parameter, safe parameter, and which I did not say, of course, because I used the, this expression or the other one. And the lambda is called actually the scale parameter, scale, scale parameter. A safe parameter means if you change the values of alpha, the shape of the curve will change. The shape of the curve will change. And then uh, shape of the curve will change means, for example, if you pick alpha equal to let's say half, okay, then it, it, will, it, it will be something like something like this, okay, oh, something like this, okay. But if you so this is for alpha equal to half, but if you say let's say alpha equal to one, then this this shape will be like this, okay. So so alpha equal to one means you see gamma value, you know the value of gamma alpha. So this will be lambda times e to the power something. So this will be exponential. So that's why I'm like drawing it like this. Okay, if you pick alpha to be equal to one, then this will look like an exponential. So that means the safe changes with respect to the value of alpha. So that's why alpha is sometimes called a safe parameter. Scaling, this parameter is a parameter that if you change, even if you change the value of lambda, the safe will not change. Safe will be fixed. But something else will change, so which is represented as one by theta in the other other expression, and the, this is called what is called the units of measurement. For example, alpha changing our alpha means just like changing some unit, let's say, of your measurement. So whenever you are go right in this, you are measuring something, right? You are measuring something. So for different values of lambda, it says lambda is this scale parameter because in some units it could be seconds, in some units it could be minutes. So if you change different values of lambda, so that's why it is called a scale parameter. But it will not affect the shape of the curve. So that's why it is called a scaling parameter. The scaling means whether you want to make the measurement, okay, in between per second or per minute, okay, based on that, this lambda will change. Or maybe you can say alpha is equal to 0 0.0003. So then there will be a different scale, not meaning that same, but some amount of minutes or some amount of seconds. So let's say some let's say millisecond or something which may not have a very standard kind of a unit of time. Let's say. So these things are also there. So in different books, people follow different kinds of things. But the basic thing is that this is an expression, whether you consider this or this, they are from, as a function, they are always same. Okay, whether you represent it by one by theta or lambda. Yeah. Sir, is this graph for uh, PDF? Yes, 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 F, 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 T, or F, X. And sir, uh, the scale parameter is changing the uh, values in x direction. No, no, no. This is not. This is x. So x is independent of lambda. For example, here in this expression, lambda and what is that? Gamma, uh, lambda, oh, sorry, alpha and lambda. That's a lambda here. Here is also lambda. So x is what t here. The t is independent of this. t is this axis. This is t. And this is ft. 
So this is a multi-parameter function. Like it has two parameters. One is lambda and one is alpha. So for a specific value of lambda and alpha, of course, you get a function. Okay, ft. Let's say you take, because alpha, beta, alpha, lambda could be anything. Here, theta and alpha could be anything. Let's say you set alpha equal to 2, theta equal to 5. You get a curve. You can change the values of lambda and alpha. You'll get a different curve. But whatever curve you pick, area under that curve, okay, will always be 1. That's why it is a period. And it is always non-negative. So it will not go in the negative axis of y. So ft is, value of ft is always positive, or let's say non-negative. So, so that's why the curves will, will change. If you can just plot it and see, like it, this would be a game. I told you yesterday, um, yesterday also, like uh, and the students in Brown University, they have de de developed a software uh, setting different values. You can immediately see what is the picture, but you can also do that. It's very simple. You just, you have to write a three line program in any kind of a language that will plot this curve. And different, you could, you could take some random values from, let's say you set alpha to be found, let's say zero to one, uh, bigger than zero. But anyway, let's equal to one, let's say. And theta is in some domain. You could change some random values and see how these curves are changing. Then we can give it a name. So then these names are justified. But since I did not plot anything, okay, so I did not give you the name, like the shape parameter, scale parameter, and so on. But one can do that, okay? One can do that and see what are the changes. But using this theta, there is another, there is another advantage to remember the formula for expectation and this. Uh, expectation which I saw I discussed, I think last day I discussed, it is theta times alpha, yeah. So this expected value is easy to remember, like theta times alpha. Because in other expectation you probably had seen that those are like rational numbers, like some one by one minus p, something like that is there, in some, except the fact of binomial, of course, n times p. So this, for, this formula, okay, also you need to remember, since you are not doing offline process, so this is okay because you can check your lecture, you can check your lecture note. But when you are appearing for an offline exam, any exam in this world, which is offline, let's say you have to appear in and sit for an exam, then you have to remember it, which is actually cruel. <laughs> okay. I mean, this should not be done, but this is what is practice. Because there is nothing to remember, right? This taste should be for your anyway. So let us not go into that. So, uh, so this is easy to remember, like theta times alpha and theta squared times alpha. Of course, you'll forget again later on. But at least for the purpose of exam, at least you can remember. Okay, which I should I should not recommend to remember this because uh, I mean there is no anyway. So uh, let us not go into that. So so it is easy to remember. Like when you have gamma, so you have two parameters: theta times alpha, theta squared times alpha. You can just remember it at least for the sake of exam. So then you can write this in terms of one by theta. Otherwise, again this will be instead of theta, it will be alpha by lambda. Okay, that's it. But since there is a ratio, sometimes you get confused. People get confused with different kinds of expressions of uh, expectation variance. So this has this kind of an advantage. But anyway, you can just uh, plot it and get a feel. How does it look like? Okay. By the way, so what I started uh, talking about is that we are assuming that this is a PDF because why it is a PDF? Because it satisfies the properties of a PDF. We do not know anything about the random variable here. Yeah. So it is that's why we are saying because it is satisfying some, pro, some properties of the PDF, it is a PDF. We are calling it a gamma function or gamma distribution because it depends on or it is defined via gamma function using gamma function. So since this is a period, this must correspond to some random variable, which you don't know. Okay. We do not know. But what we know is there, this is that there is a curve. We have a have infinitely many curves because for different values of alpha and lambda, you'll have different kinds of curves. Now, whenever you get a data, let's say, if data is always discrete and you get this kind of a curve, I mean, for different distribution, you get a similar kind of a curve. Let's say you get this for this particular values you are getting. Okay, some these are the picks you got. So then easily you can, you can guess, okay, this may come from some kind of exponential function. So let us look and let us go back and see, see that what are those PDFs, okay, which include an exponential function as a factor? Possibly this is modeling this kind of a scenario. Um, uh, I mean, this real data, okay, which are here, let's say, okay, and this data is taken at this point of time, this point of time, this point of time, or whatever be the common variables, okay? So then you can possibly go back and see that whether it is following that uh, for some particular values of alpha and lambda. So these things we'll be discussing actually when we'll talk about estimation of parameters. Okay, and there is another thing which is called hypothesis, hypothesis testing. 
So why did we have enough time? Okay, I'm making, I'm telling you, I mean, iteratively, I mean, again and again, so that if we have time, then we'll be able to discover all those things. That how do you get a guess? How do you estimate such uh, values, the parameters which are involved in this PDF? And the question is, whether you are assuming that your data is following some kind of a distribution, if you make this kind of a hypothesis, okay, uh, then you have to test whether this hypothesis is correct or not. Okay, what are the techniques to do that? Okay, and what are the possibilities that you can make an error in that particular hypothesis? So that's the job of hypothesis text testing. So we'll be discussing that, but which here we just need to know this. What are the PDFs? Okay, you can read about it, like what what are the corresponding practical situations how this can appear, but this is of not of our interest for the time being, because for the case of data analysis, we may even not know how the data is obtained. The data set is given to you. Now you have to analyze. You never also sometimes do not know how this data is produced. Okay, in that case, what will you do? So you have this kind of a PDF or this kind of a PMF. Okay, and based on that, you have to analyze. So you have to know the techniques how to analyze the data. So sometimes it may happen that you do not know the source of the data. So that's why there is a there is a concept also that different kinds of uncertainties, which I did not again explain in the beginning. So there, so collection when the when you are collecting your data, that is also uncertain whether the data is correct or not. So again, you are making an assumption the data is correct. Now we are trying to figure out oh, what will be the possible distribution. Okay, okay, I think yeah. So these things are there always. Okay, but we need at least to know that what are different kinds of standard PDFs available to us, and what are their uh, mean variance and this kind of things, so that at least we can. We can start okay discussing about a data if the data is given to us okay we have a ground or zero ground zero level in zero level information to begin with so this is what we are discussing here okay so then one more uh, distribution which we call exponential this is also continuous time i mean continuous continuous uh, this is a distribution for for a continuous random variable uh, so this is a PDF. This PDF is called exponential. Exponential distribution. So it is defined as this fx 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 is equal to one by theta to the power minus x by theta if x is positive and zero otherwise. Otherwise, okay, and theta is positive. So there is only one parameter. Okay, you can write x is distributed as exp. This is standard notation. X, exp, mm, theta. Here, just a note. You can you can probably already have observed that this is a particular case of the gamma function. In fact, in the gamma function here, if you put alpha to be equal to one. Yeah, if you put alpha to be equal to one, we get back this exponential distribution. So this is exponential distribution is a particular case of gamma. So this is just a note that uh, uh, setting setting alpha is equal to one in gamma distribution, gamma distribution, okay, the exponential distribution can be obtained. Exponential distribution distribution can be obtained. Okay. Now uh, I'll I'll give you one more uh, distribution, which is important in statistics. Okay, is very very important. It is called chi square. Chi-square distribution. Chi-square distribution. Chi-square distribution. Okay, and again there is a term which is called degrees of freedom. Okay, here, but it has a different meaning. Okay, which I will not say. If I get time, when I will discuss statistics, they are using the context. I will explain what is the degrees of freedom. What is the concept of degrees of freedom? But here, let us say, let us define the chi-square distribution this way. 
a chi-square distribution. Suppose we have a random variable x, which follows chi-square distribution with r degrees of freedom. A random variable, or just say the chi-square distribution, chi-square distribution with r degrees of freedom. R is a parameter here, of course. R, r degrees of freedom. R degrees of freedom is given by this kind of a function, fx, fx, which is equal to 1 by gamma r by 2, 2 to the power r by 2, x to the power r by 2, minus 1, 2 to the power minus x by 2, when x is bigger equal to 0, or you can say bigger than 0, and 0 otherwise. So this is the formula for, and of course R is degrees of freedom is always positive. So this is called chi-square distribution with R degrees of freedom, and then we say the corresponding random variable is distributed as, this, this is the notation of chi, chi-square R. In fact, uh, you can also see, probably have observed, that this chi-square is a note. Chi-square can be obtained also as a special case of gamma. So gamma is a general response. So this is just a note, okay? That setting alpha is equal to r by 2. And alpha, uh, r is some positive number. And uh, theta is equal to 2. This chi square can be, chi square with r, let's say, can be obtained. Can be obtained from gamma. Gamma distribution. In fact, if you this is a remark which I'll not say because I did not discuss what is called a normal distribution. So if R is very, very large, so if R goes to infinity, then here yeah, there is only one parameter, okay, because this theta is fixed, value two. So there is only one parameter. If, if you take R very large, then this chi square, okay, with R degrees of freedom will approximate. So that's why I said. We'll talk about approximate of, approximation of different kinds of uh, distributions. We'll approximate, approximate something called a normal distribution, which we'll discuss. Normal distribution. Okay. So what is normal? I'll talk about that uh, in okay in five minutes maybe. So I need to discuss one more. Distribution here before that, one of two. So the gamma is a generalized one, I and mean, because some some special distributions like chi square and exponential, they follow special cases of gamma. But gamma itself can again be generalized, okay, into another distribution. Okay, I am not going into this. So how it can be generalized? Okay, so keeping uh, these two parameters, alpha and theta. Okay, and including one more parameter, it can further be generalized. But without giving into that, going into that, let me directly define what is something called weighable distribution. This is another distribution. Okay, this is called a weighable distribution. So this distribution will follow as a special case of the generally version of the gamma distribution. So in the weighable distribution, uh, the density function is defined as this fx is equal to alpha by theta x to the power alpha minus 1 e to the power minus x to the power alpha by theta and when this uh, x bigger equal to 0 and 0 otherwise in fact here if you set this is just a note you just see if you just set alpha equal to 1 in knowable, you'll get back exponential distribution again, which easily can be seen here. If I'm setting alpha equal to 1 in knowable, knowable gives us, gives us exponential. And this knowable distribution is actually sometimes is the model uh, uh, lifetime of 
different components of the system. And uh, it's, uh, here, this is a new distribution. This is different from gamma, but for a special case of variable is again exponential. The corresponding what is called mean is this theta to the power one by alpha, gamma of one plus one by alpha, and variance is really complicated. So sigma square will be equal to theta to the power two by alpha, gamma of one plus two by alpha. In fact, I don't need to discuss all this. I could have just left this all the exercises. But at least for the purpose of exam, these are useful because there, suppose there is a problem, you can easily see the lecture notes and what are the what are the values of the mean and median you can I mean mean and the variance you can easily see. That's why I'm writing it. But you must check. And sometimes I may be wrong. I mean, I should not be, but by mistake, whenever writing and saying, sometimes I could be wrong. So you should check again with some book, the test book which I gave you. This is always recommended. Okay, then one more distribution, important distribution, and then possibly go back to normal. I don't know whether it is possible today or not. And normal is the distribution which one should know every bit of it. <laughs> I mean, normal, we should much more be focused on normal because normal appears everywhere and we'll also try to justify why normal is important. But let us, uh, before that, uh, let, let me define one more distribution which is called beta distribution or beta distribution. Beta distribution. Okay, so beta distribution is it is a distribution. This also this also occurs in many. I mean, this appears in many aspects of statistics, in particular Bayesian statistics. Okay, so this is defined in terms of beta function. So what is beta function? There are two parameters again, alpha, beta. These are positive, and the beta function is p of alpha beta, which is zero, integration zero to one, x to the power alpha minus one. 1 minus x to the power beta minus 1 dx. Okay. And some properties of this beta function because it also connects to gamma, which you possibly know, but I'm just keeping, I'm just keeping a note of it. So beta of alpha, uh, B of alpha beta is uh, gamma alpha, gamma beta by gamma alpha plus beta. And you know what is gamma function, which we discussed before. And another thing is, uh, if we just change alpha and beta, it doesn't matter much. So it is symmetric. If we replace alpha by beta or beta by alpha, doesn't matter. It is the same expression here. So beta B of alpha beta is same as B of beta alpha. This is symmetric, okay? In the notation, like whether you can change alpha and beta. And another thing is, if alpha beta are positive integers, if alpha beta are positive integers, then it has a nice expression. Okay. Yes, then um, B of alpha comma beta will be alpha minus one times beta minus one divided by alpha plus beta minus one, alpha plus beta minus two. And then it is like a similar kind of an expression which we have seen for the gamma function, okay? When the n is integer, because that the parameter was n, where so does alpha beta? So this is uh, alpha minus one comma beta minus one. Now we are able to. So let us let me just define what is the PDF first thing to the beta distribution. It is f x is equal to one by d alpha comma beta x to the power alpha minus one one minus x to the power beta minus one zero less than x less than one and zero otherwise. Okay, and the alpha beta of course positive, which is said before. And if any random variable which follows this beta distribution, we, or we write it as x, it distributes at beta alpha beta. So there are two parameters. Okay, and in fact, here also one note if we take alpha beta both to be not, if we set alpha to be equal to one and beta equal to also one, then this distribution will be nothing but uniform distribution. So then beta distribution, then beta distribution is the uniform distribution, uniform distribution, distribution over 
0, 1. Because in uniform distribution, you have defined in an integral a and b, here the interval is 0 to 1. And the mean is, it has a nice formula, alpha by alpha plus beta, and variance will be alpha beta divided by alpha plus beta whole square, alpha plus beta plus 1. You can possibly um, consider these, all these things as a uh, homework. How to prove that these are actually PDFs, and these things also can be proved using the NGF or directly you can compute this uh, mean and the variance. Anyway, we are not doing it here, okay? This will take a lot of time. But this will, you know, it is un ultimately end of the day, it is integration. I think you know better than me how to, how to calculate how to evaluate integration, okay? Okay, now we are ready to talk about what is called normal distribution, but instead of normal, I will say Gaussian distribution. This is famous known as normal. I'll also tell you why it is called normal. This is the most famous distribution because of so many reasons. Distribution. Okay, this is where I, I must tell this. I keep the note. This is widely used. Widely used in every aspect of statistics, is in statistics, machine learning. Machine learning and etc. Yes, sir. Actually, it is quite difficult to remember such type of sir, distribution, sir. Probably distribution yeah, and that distribution value. Yeah, you don't have to remember. That's why I say because you are not anyway appearing for the offline exam, right? <laughs> so you can keep your note with you. I also don't remember, right? <laughs> Nobody remembers all these things. Okay, sir. Yeah, so you don't have to remember. I would not ever recommend. To, I mean, say, I mean, as a student, you should be a little, I mean, what should I say? I mean, I don't know whether I should be able, to, I should say it or not. See, you should always ask questions. I mean, it is not because you are a student. As a person also, you should always ask all fundamental questions to everything. For example, we have a rule, we have an administration, okay, uh, which implements different techniques, different techniques so that students should not cheat. <laughs> okay, we develop different kind of mechanism. But the first question is, do the faculty members also not take, uh, also not take, uh, cheat? That's the first question. <laughs> okay, so the sir. question is, who is, who is on the other side of the table? <laughs> right, it is not like faculty members are, you know, they are, they can be, I would say allowed, they can be allowed to cheat. It is not like that. Okay, they also should not. But I know most of us, most of the faculty must also cheat. For, where? For example, when I'm making a question paper, where I'm making the question from? Should I making it by myself or I'm follow reading a book and copying it from there? That is also a question. Right? So if I ask you to remember this, then I should also remember first. But I'm telling you that I cannot remember all this formula because I, okay, how can you remember one thing which is very typically like this kind of form? Unless I can remember it possibly if I use it for a daily purpose. Let's say every alternate week I use it, this kind of things. Okay, then possibly you, after using it so many times, I can, I can possibly remember it. But otherwise, I'll not be able to remember it. <laughs> so you don't have to remember. Just study these things, okay? These are different kinds sir, of questions. This is how this looks like. Yeah. One more thing, sir, because you are actually yes. showing us this distribution, but if you are not actually sir, showing us the uh, means, the sir, uh, distributions, uh, I think, sir, graph, sir, graphical representation. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, the, yeah. Sir, application of it, sir. So we do not know where to apply and why we are actually learning these things, sir. Yes. So the thing is, uh, the graphs, I mean, most of the graphs will be similar. We just draw it similar in what sense there are different parameters right it's, for example here there are two parameters alpha and beta for different so it is not like there is only unique set of a of the pdf of any fixed distribution it is not like that if you plot the graph of beta for some beta distribution let's say for some values of alpha beta and if you plot a graph of let's say gamma for some values of theta and alpha you may see that they are similar 
Even if you see the normal, which we'll be discussing next, you see that normal also can be obtained as an approximation for some other function. Like I said, uh, this one, uh, the binomial. So these functions, they are not independent. This is just a construct, is a construct of a function. From the graph, you cannot detect which distribution it is coming from. You can only make an assumption. Okay, you can make only some speculation that from the graph, so that's why graphs are not very much important in this context because similar kind of graphs can be obtained for different kinds of distribution. So what is important is, what is the definition of this corresponding PDF? I may not remember it, but I know they are different and how they are related. If I know how they are related, then possibly I would see whether this for some special cases of this value so that that can be obtained or not. For example, I said exponential. I don't need to draw for example exponential because I know gamma. But, but a gamma for a particular case, it will give you exponential. So for that particular set of values of the parameters, it will, you can obtain a different kind of uh, a curve. In fact, for any values of these parameters, you'll always get a new PDF. This is a generalized version. For example, this beta. If you fix the values of alpha and beta, then you of course get a new PDF. Okay, in a very simpler form. Like here, if you just put alpha equal to two, beta equal to two. So then you get a new nice formula for a new distribution. So this is a generalized class. So it has completely different, I mean, crazy shapes, okay, for different, for different values of alpha and beta. So it is not unified. It is not like the, from the curve, we can detect what distribution is. No, it is not possible. So that's why how does it look like for, for particular cases, for particular values of alpha, beta, that is not, that is not very much important. The important is, how these functions are related. That is what is important, which will be discussing possibly next week. We are running out of time today. But this one, and we also do not know, as I said, which particular situation this could occur. That also we do not know. It can occur in many different contexts, which I don't know. Even as I said, the, the way the data points are produced, that is also sometimes not known. The source it is also sometimes not known. So it is, it is of no use to invest time to know what is the corresponding random error for which it, this kind of this uh, curves or PDFs can be obtained. Okay, we did it for binomial for uh, what is called Poisson, and not for Poisson, but binomial, Bernoulli, geometric distribution, this is total number of the hypergeometric, negative binomial, these things, because those are very simple. And everything depends on one particular theory, which is called Bernoulli process. So I talked about poison process, but there is another process, it's called Bernoulli process. You will be uh, knowing all these things if you do a course in a stochastic pro on stochastic process. Okay, there are people will uh, discuss different kinds of stochastic processes, and the first one will be Bernoulli process. And if you define Bernoulli process from the Bernoulli process itself, all those distributions which depend on Bernoulli distribution can be obtained, can be derived. Similarly, you have, have one more process which is poison. Okay, one more possible as a marker process, and these things will be discussed in a different course. But since it is the first course, we are not talking about so what is the stochastic process? Stochastic process is a sequence of random variables. Here in the beginning, we are talking about random variables. Then it will come. What is the sequence of random variables? Okay, so that's a different advanced topic, not this topic. Like it is just only random variables and its PDF. So PDF is nothing but your 10 plus 2 situation where you get to a different kind of function. So it is the same thing. We are studying different kind of functions, but here there are different kinds of parameters associated with the function, and these functions are related in some sense. For different values of parameters, this can be obtained. One thing can be obtained from the other one. So curves or the PDFs, how does it look like? It's not much important because it can take totally different shape if you change the values of the parameters involved to define the PDF. Okay, I think we will not. Yeah, go ahead. Any other question? Yes, I, think we'll, yes. I will not be able to. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, but anyway, so you can, you should uh, read the book, uh, the textbook which I referred to you. There will be a lot of samples of curves for different values of these parameters. Okay, but you cannot get a generalized curve for all values of alpha beta because it is an infinite domain. What you, you can possibly do is you can get a surface. Okay, let's say alpha is, but that surface will be very, very crazy. I mean, from the surface, the way it will look like, you will not make a guess, like, what is this? I mean, you can try to draw, let's say, the surface corresponding to this function, let's say beta, 
for let's say when alpha is from 0 to 1 and beta is from 0 to 1. Let's say you draw this. You take a continuous domain. So you draw a surface like this. Let's say this is alpha, this is beta. You set the values from 0 to 1 and also this is from 0 to 1. So then this is your domain. You discretize the domain. Okay, this is a standard way to plot any uh, a curve or a surface. And this is your uh, beta or effect here. Okay? So then you will get different values of this thing. Okay, for different values of alpha and beta, you can discretize into let's say 200 or 100 or 400 points from 0 to 1. And then you find, calculate all the values of this f and then you try to get a feel. How does the surface look like? But I must tell you, you can try and do that and then you can get back to me. How does it look like? <laughs> okay, because uh, yeah, anyway, but you should read the book, which I refer to, or at least have a look. There you see how for different standard values of this parameter or for different values of parameter, how this they, they give some examples. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop here, but if you have any question, please ask. Yeah. Sir, there can be more 